Hey folks, how's it going? So I recently picked myself up a mini lathe and it arrived today in a really cool looking crate. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to unbox it, kind of talk through my first impressions, and hopefully give some of you who may be on the fence about buying one of these things a push in one direction or the other. But yeah, let's open this thing up and see what it looks like. So this is the crate, and the first thing that needs to happen is these little tabs that are holding it shut need to be pried upward. And the way that I found works best to do that is to take one of these little demolition screwdriver things and use it to get under them and just pry upward. Uh, once you get them started, it's pretty easy to just grab with a gloved hand and just fold them up to be straight. Once you get the most of the way there, a pair of pliers is pretty useful just to come in and get the last little bend uh, just to let those little clasps slip uh, up and through. Once you get that done, you can take the top off and you get your first look at the lathe. And I was actually really impressed with how well this was packaged. The lathe itself is bolted to the bottom of the crate, and they also added this styrofoam packing material uh, that probably kept it in pretty good shape no matter what was done to it during shipping. One thing that I did find kind of funny is the add-ons that were added to this lathe, just as part of the Amazon deal. Uh, were just kind of tucked in different places in the crate. So something that I wanted that wasn't included with the lathe was some kind of way cover. And I found something that worked really well with my CNC router was just to take a piece of parchment paper and just tape that into place. Um, it's not permanent, but I think it'll work well enough for now on the lathe and uh, I'll get a real one, you know, somewhere down the line. So I finished installing the way covers, and I also added a couple pieces of paper to this guard just to keep some of the oil that I noticed was spinning out of the chuck off of the walls and off of me. And while I was doing all that, I noticed that it is incredibly easy to slide this carriage, and there currently isn't a carriage lock. So when I looked up online, it seems like a lot of people add one, and I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take this whole thing apart. Uh, disassemble it, give it a good cleaning probably. Um, there's some machining grit, I think, that is kind of caught in some of these ways from the factory, and I'm hoping to get rid of all of that. Let's, let's get this thing done so we can do some test cuts. So this is the bolt that I want to use for the carriage lock, um, and the upper flange here is a little bit too big and will interfere with the Gibbs locking nuts. And I was thinking, okay, maybe I can countersink it, or get a different bolt that might fit a little better. And then I remembered, I now have a lathe. So I'm gonna take this, uh, stick it in the chuck and trim down a little bit of the flange here so it fits and it doesn't interfere with these nuts. So I guess now is as good of a time as any to admit that I know very little about how to actually machine stuff. Um, trying to learn, but you know, there's a lot of skills that I just, I don't have yet. Um, so one of those skills is how to hold things in a lathe chuck, uh, especially things like a screw thread uh, that you can't just clamp onto um, and hope you won't crush. Uh, the solution I came up with was to take a little piece of copper grounding wire and just wrap it around uh, the bolt uh, and then just clamp onto that. Uh, it, it isn't perfect, um, you know, there ends up being a little bit of eccentricity. Um, but it's it's something that I can live with. I'm just going to turn it down slightly farther than I would have if it was perfectly round. All right, first cuts in the lathe completed. Um, I think that turned out pretty well, all things considered. And that should be small enough to fit better under those Gibbs adjustment screws. Now that that thing's built, let's get the rest of this thing made. All right, and with that, the part is done. Uh, it's just a little T that fits between the oiled ways. And I notched out a hexagon to hold a nut that the bolt can then 
threaded to. And this should work as our carriage lock. So the only thing that's left to do is assemble everything, cut the bolt down to size, and give this thing a test. All right, so I have everything reassembled, and when I give the locking bolt the turn, the carriage is locked in place. I feel it would be inappropriate for me to go through all this effort of making the carriage lock and not use it at least once in the video. So I went ahead and grabbed this little piece of aluminum stock, or as the British would say, missile. And I'm going to go ahead and try to face this thing off and see if we can get a good flat result. Okay, admittedly, I have nothing to compare this to, but I think that looks pretty good. And that's the video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.